hello and welcome to you all and thank you for joining our webinar today. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Christopher Rush and it's my distinct pleasure to talk to you all about some of our exciting new products we've been developing here at Gallarat, uh, which we think we, you're going to get even better value from using our SEER tools. Hello folks, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about some really exciting new tools we have at uh, SEER for manufacturing. We've got some new additions to the family of estimating tools. These actually reside in the CATIA desktop and we have one uh, that doesn't need to be in CATIA. We call them the ply cost estimator, the sheet metal cost estimator, and the machining estimators. And they really make estimating fast and easy. It uh, very, very quickly will load up an opportunity for you to tell it what you want to estimate and as quickly as that, it's extracting the data right out of the uh, CATIA model and is telling you almost instantly how much your part is worth. We've got these for composites, we've got these for sheet metal, we've got these for machine parts. And if you're not in the, envir in the CATIA environment, we've got a standalone that works with SEER that will do your machined parts. So stick around, listen to the rest of the webinar, and um, call us if you need us. Thank you. So I'll... I'll start this morning by sharing our vision in CAD to cost, followed by an introduction into the CAD to cost solutions we have uh, to offer you. I uh, will review the key benefits of CAD to cost and look at how SEER for manufacturing, the cost engine, uh, powers the estimation process directly from your CAD models. Uh, I'll look and briefly discuss some of the use cases, the users of SEER, and show you how successful you can be from using these tools. I'll then pass you over to Dan. Dan's going to provide some real live demonstrations of all the interfaces we have uh, in SEER for CATIA V5 and our SEER 3D product. Once we've done that, we'll summarize everything we've gone through today and hopefully leave plenty of time for any uh, questions you may have. So without further ado, so our vision really is to get manufacturing costs directly into the hands of designers, cost engineers, and the supply chain so all can quantify costs directly from CAD models. Uh, many of you probably heard at some point in your careers that 70 to 80 percent of manufacturing costs it gets committed during this early design phase. So having that ability to get cost directly from design data empowers the businesses and with cost knowledge sooner. Uh, you, companies get better understanding of cost before they're committing to a project, which ultimately reduces costly redesign later in the product life cycle. So our tools are going to save your expensive assets time and you're going to get more estimates and quotes finished in a shorter period of time. Bottom line is, you know, we think these tools are going to save you a lot of money. You're going to be faster, become better, and get even more value from using SEER, if you can believe that possible. So the SEER for CATIA V5 interfaces that we have, uh, these are essentially companion products to the SEER for manufacturing cost model. So within CATIA, designers can get real-time cost feedback as they're designing. Designers will get a visual cost trend each time they rerun an estimate for a design or requirement change. The estimates uh, themselves you know, are SEER manufacturing based, so they're comprehensive. They include labor, material, and tooling costs, all the typical costs you get from SEER for manufacturing. There are currently three interfaces inside of CATIA. We have one for composites, one for sheet metal, and one for machining. Uh, the interfaces essentially automate the extraction of all the CAD model data and the geometry to build a detailed SEER for manufacturing cost model. And it's all done within seconds. And you're going to see that when Dan uh, demonstrates shortly. So, this puts a ton or a lot of cost engineering knowledge and power right into the hands of the designers, right in their workstation. Designers have the 
where, where designers have the biggest um, opportunity to affect cost. So we, we give the designers insight into what their decisions may cost to avoid costly re redesigns later. CA3D, uh, on the other hand, is a standalone CAD independent application. So you don't need CATIA or any of the other main vendor CAD solution. It's designed to read step files and can be used for machining part cost estimates. It's CA3D, it's really easy and intuitive to use. Some of you have probably already begun using it. It builds estimates in seconds and it can save you many hours of manual effort transcribing drawings and or CAD model data uh, into Serum FG. So the created estimates can be published and shared and incorporated into larger project estimates for sub-assemblies and assemblies. Anyone involved with uh, manufacturing cost estimating will find the SEER tools very, very helpful indeed. So I'll just go through a couple of uh, the benefits that we see from CAD to cost. Um, there, there are lots of advantages all kind of listed here. Of course, you, you're getting direct cost from solid models. You no, lead, no longer need to use effort translating and compiling the part geometry to make sense for your estimate. Uh, these interfaces, they capture organize, organizational knowledge and best practices. By that, we, we uh, incorporate uh, design rules and your own manufacturing processes, your own material data, labor rates, the, the efficiencies of your organization into the costing process. So all of that information is available for re reuse across the entire company and team that's involved with the design and costing. And of course it accelerates the costing process even 90% quicker than SEER currently is on its own. Uh, so these faster cost estimates mean less expense, free of resources, so they can focus on other critical tasks. And it's a process driven quality. So the SEER tools provide consistency. It's repeatable and it's a robust process. Um, of course, you're, you're able to optimize cost uh, with instant trade-offs. So you, you get visibility into the cost drivers and it promotes exploration uh, of conceptual and detailed design alternatives. Uh, you get the, uh, and essentially you're exposing the cost implications to, to a broader set of people. So you're realizing a culture of engagement and accountability. You, so you can make the faster, better, more informed decisions. And there are probably many other benefits too, as we'll see. So the SEER tools themselves, you know, these are often an integral part of the design process already. So the, but with these newer solutions, uh, that we accelerate all the benefits of having a cost engine embed within the design process. It makes quantified costing data and process knowledge accessible to a wider community you know, within that team. And one of the key concepts we use is that of manufacturing environments. These utilize all the SEER knowledge bases and templates and along with your own customized or data pertinent to you, such as material costs and labor rates. Uh, all of these are set up to reflect the parts or the location or your specific organization. To, so you can get deadly accurate estimates you know, within seconds. Um, so what happens is once you set these up, within the interface and application, you just simply select the environment that matches the part you're dealing with or estimating and, and away you go. You just enter the quantity you need to make and you get your estimate. So some of you listening or many of you listening today, you're long time users of SEER and you understand that the, uh, the SEER for manufacturing tool and the industry standard data that sits behind these cost interfaces. So, this is what we're calling, SEER for Manufacturing is kind of like the cost engine for these CAD tools interfaces. Uh, it's a bottom-up parametric cost model 
It's based on industry standards and we use parametric forecasting, regression and other analytical techniques to make the power of this tool in, into a CIRAP FG. Uh, we estimate at the manufacturing process level for individual parts sub-assemblies and complete assemblies. You can use Serum FG to estimate a simple plastic widget all the way up to a full aircraft assembly. I mean it's that broad and, and that specific. It's uh, routinely used you know, for DFM analysis and trade studies. And the outputs are unit cost, total cost, uh, based on learning and your productivity. Um, you get the labor cost is broken out into setup, direct, inspection and rework, but you also get your own your material and tooling, so you can make really um, informed decisions about the cost, what this uh, manufacturing will cost. Uh, further than that, it's intuitive to use and because it, it's based on part and process parameters, so you're putting in information that makes sense to the part that you're manufacturing. You're, you're describing the processes, you know, we're drilling holes here, we're milling here, or we're laying this ply into this situation, onto this type of tool, so it's all very uh, explainable and defendable when you um, need to present or negotiate that estimate. So just, uh, just to go over who are the typical users and what are some of the uses of SEER, well, we're often, the users t typically are cost engineers, production engineers, design engineers, industrial engineers, and, and uh, integrated product teams. So the, these are, we, we work with uh, these kind of users on a daily basis. And they can all benefit from these new interfaces because you're going to get faster, more accurate results uh, with less uh, knowledge about the, the processes you can start to broaden the applications within your companies. Uh, these tools are helpful to business development and supply chain. You can do should cost support, aid to negotiations. I mean, it's, it's common to have SEER estimates in front of uh, suppliers to negotiate price. You get the SEER estimate, the supplier has their estimate, you can go through the, the estimate, you can show them exactly what you've done, it all makes sense, it's like, look, these are the processes we used, and you come to a, a, a new agreement, and you'll see that in a case study I'm going to highlight later, how that kind of works, <clears throat> and saves millions, I mean, you can save millions doing this. Um, of course, there are design and production groups who are routinely doing trade studies, what ifs, you know, what if we machine this part or what if we take this part that we've been machining for years, what if we now use a composite uh, set of processes, you know, how would, how would that look now? And you know, maybe, it, maybe it's worth trading uh, to go in that direction. So I'll just want to touch on a couple of the uh, successes you can have using these tools. Uh, you don't have to take what I'm saying uh, uh, or believe me, if you, or, because if you get some time, just go and look at gallereth.com. There's a lot of information, case studies. You can see exactly what successes uh, other users have got and how they wanted to share with us the, and the larger community. You know, they, they kind of they want you to know that hey, these tools are working for us. So they're all unique, uh, but I'll just emphasize something from Philips. Um, they they were recommended to use SEER by Boeing. And to use a quote from their case study, they, they were saying directly how one of SEER uh, MFG's strengths is its ability to influence design decisions, pointing the way to the simplest and most cost-effective solution. That's a, you know, one of the uh, part of our vision, right? To get these into the cost of these, these tools into the hands of designers. Uh, additionally, they used the SEER tool as a should cost negotiation with suppliers. So they were able to get a price that normally they've been quoted at 1,000 euros. They used SEER, built the models, and were able to say, hey, look, you know, this is what SEER is saying. They got the negotiated price down to 350 euros um, based on the SEER estimates. So a massive saving. 
And then they were doing trades and other um, activities with SEER, ultimately resulted in savings of one and a half million euros in the first year of use. I mean, that's incredible. It's real, it's, uh, we're not making it up, uh, but it's, that's the kind of uh, success you can have with these tools. And I think with that, I've probably rambled on enough. I think I would like to hand over to uh, Dan Kennedy so he can actually show you these CAD to cost interfaces to help you uh, improve your process. Thanks, Dr. Rush and, and Kelly and uh, everybody who's uh, uh, taken the time to come and listen to us and talk about how, how these tools can make their lives better. My name is Dan Kennedy. I'm the director of the engineering services here for, for Galrath, and um, I work in this tool every day. Um, it's good. My background is in composites and in mostly operations and in, and in programs. And uh, boy, when I when I discovered these SEER tools, that was a real godsend to me. So, um, what I'd like to talk about today is some of these uh, these estimators, these tools that we have plugged in to the Dassault Katia desktop. You folks will hear me refer to design engineers. We're working on the Katia desktop. Uh, what I really mean to use this tool is the right person in your organization. May it, maybe it's a manufacturing engineer. Maybe it's somebody out of procurement. But uh, I'll use design engineer just for the rest of this discussion. Much of my career has been spent trying to give advice to designers as they're doing the development of these parts to make them more economical and to design to cost, either from um, from a manufacturing st stand side or from the operations side to get them back in the box on their costs. I think we've all been involved in, in a program where um, the, the schedule gets compromised because we have to go into redesign. The, the designers don't have to redesign their, their technical solution and uh, the program manager doesn't want to pay for the solution they came up with. So uh, these are very, very good tools and uh, as I said, I'm, my background is predominantly in composites uh, where I've spent most of my time. And this tool is outstanding. Uh, combined with the CATIA, it gives you, as Chris described, a deadly accurate estimates on composites. Uh, we do sheet metal and we do machining as well. But I'm going to just show you in depth, or a bit in depth, what the composites tool does. We now have um, an icon sitting right here inside the design environment. We worked with the SO to integrate this into CATIA. And, and quite frankly, in just a few seconds, um, SEER is going to go in. It's going to interrogate all of this geometry. It's going to ask me a few of the questions that I would normally be asking to set this job up. It's going to ask me what my environments are, how I'm going to lay it up, um, how many I'm going to build. It's already brought in the size of the part that I'm dealing with. It asks me for some of these process options. Um, how am I going to cut it? How am I going to place it? What kind of bagging materials am I going to use? What's my debulk interval going to be? Um, whether it's core in it or not, how I'm going to cure it. Generally speaking, what kind of materials I'm going to be curing. Whether I want to include non-destructive testing, tool fab, finishing. Um, and it's got materials details. And really, very quickly at this point, when I tell it to estimate, what would have taken me an hour or two is now done inside SEER. The designer never had to leave the desktop. It's telling him right now how much this part is going to cost to build. It's telling him what his setups are, what his directs are, what his inspection times are, how much rework is involved. It actually comes in and will write the data right here on what he did to create that estimate. What the inputs that he made were, writes it right inside the CATIA data. It's there for him next time he pulls it up. If, for instance, um, he were to decide that uh, this was too much money and he wanted to make some changes, uh, he could go in, for instance, and start changing some of these, um, some of these plies to find out what happens if he drops plies or changes plies. Uh, he simply reruns the SEER estimate. And in a very, very short period of time, SEER is going to tell him 
that the cost of his design is going down. And that's incredibly valuable for a designer who's working to a constraint that might not be his primary constraint. Designers tend to look for technical solutions. Program managers in the organizations want to be able to make it affordable. And the last thing you want to do is, is have to go in and redesign something because you don't meet your objectives. Uh, if you want to take a real close look, make some tweaks, I think that you hit this Show Seer button and it will pull up the Seer estimate right here right here in front of you and you can go ahead and look at everything that is laid in. This this tool just laid in 90 plies in a matter of seconds. All the sizes, all the orientations, the materials you're interested in. It's laid in your inspection. It's brought in the dimensions already, reloaded it, loaded all the, the standards that the industry has developed, included those in the estimate. It's chosen an autoclave cure, told the size of it, all the things that you need to know to make this part cured. It's gone in and extracted the trim length out of the CATIA data, and it is it loaded up um, the finishing operations that you're going to need to do. All of this in just a matter of seconds, right on the desktop, and giving you a price. If you're interested in looking at the fine detail inside these things, the Aero Details report that I think most of you know well, um, it's got it all broken out. And you can see what uh, the, the setups for standards are in the world, the standard direct minutes, and where your estimate falls on those things. Um, all this data that you're accustomed to seeing out of SEER is in there and ready to go. And, and in just a few seconds, you've got a very robust, very defendable, very accurate estimate on your composite details. Um, that is the composites, and I, and I just love this tool. It, it makes my life tremendously easy, much easier than it would be otherwise. Um, we've got a number of other tools that we can use. Um, we've created uh, tools for sheet metal, and tools for sheet metal, um, we've already built the Aero sheet metal tools, where we have taken the standard sheet metal processes, the the platings, the the formings, the the machining, the um, the painting and finishing, heat treats. We've already taken those and made them easy inside uh, the Aero sheet metal tool. But this tool takes it one step farther and and extracts all the geometry, much like what I just showed you inside the Katia tool. Uh, the designer is presented with this little dialog box where he can give the top level uh, design information that he's looking for. He may want to choose uh, to do a, a typical process here. He may want to do a trade on that at some point. Picks a process, uh, picks the process options, how you preform them, what you do after forming, what kind of detailed finished operations you might want to want to do and um, whether you're going to do tool fab and design. And very, very quickly, it will go in and it will create you a sheet metal cost for this part. We've got an $85 part now coming in here. Just that quickly. Um, you can go in and modify your estimate. You may want to run a trade on this in some form. You may want to decide you want to uh, do a high pressure, pressure press operation on this thing. Do away with the drop hammer. Uh, he may not know which the best approach to take is. Reestimate this thing, and he just took the price down on that part. It's that fast, sitting right on the designer's desktop. He can do design trades, process trades, and make really good decisions about how to keep these parts affordable. Once again, you can open up the SEER tool. It's already loaded. You can make all the manipulations, all the changes, all the refinements, all the tweaking of the estimate that you may want to do inside SEER as you would customarily do. It's, uh, it's just a phenomenal tool, uh, in my opinion. Once again, when you tell it OK, it goes ahead and saves the work that you did inside CATIA. 
so that uh, the next time the designer loads it, it will compare what he does in that session to what he had previously estimated he needed to do. The third tool that we have sitting inside the DESO platform, inside the CATIA platform, is for machining. I find this to be very, very useful as well. The typical process for estimating a machine part is to pull it up, to go into the CATIA tools, into the design tools, start interrogating surfaces, start forming in your mind how you're going to create those features in a machine part. Make measurements as we did before. Um, measure those features. Find out what the surface area of those things is, say for uh, a finished machine pass. Um, all the things that you would normally do to create an estimate are now done for you very, very quickly. Uh, the designer has already spent a great deal of time putting features into a machine part. What Sear just did, it went in, interrogated all those features, and created a manufacturing process to generate those features. The same window that you have seen before pops up and speaks to what he may want to know. There are a number of different uh, opportunities to choose different types of machining processes for these things. Uh, of course, as it's heavily driven by setup quantities and setup costs, your production quantities are important. What material you're going to be using, forgings, die casting, all the things you're accustomed to seeing in SEER are loaded into this thing. What sort of materials you're using, what's your raw shape. It's already pulled the lengths, widths, heights, all the geometry has come out of there. I've told it to, destroy, to display the stock outline. You can see the part that's embedded into the, to the wrought stock that you're doing. It lets you choose the roughing operations you may want to choose. Again, it's already calculated the total stock volume, the finished part volume. It knows how much material it's removing. It knows the surface area of the part, how much volume you're taking off. Uh, you can turn on different, um, choose different ways of doing these things. Tool fab and design, of course, is there. Um, surface finish operations. It lists all of these surfaces, how it intends to finish them, how, what the tolerance of those things might be. Um, if you want to change any of those things, you can go in, you can edit those groups. You can change the way this part of the tool is looking at the features that you're talking about. And then once again, um, in just a very few seconds, really, you're generating a SEER estimate based on the geometry of the part that the designer chose, and it's creating a model here for SEER that'll tell you how much that part costs, just that quickly. On the desktop, he can see how many hours that he's working on these things, what his total cost of those things are. Um, saving it in the CATIA tree, again, if you want to take a quick look at what it is that it has created for you, um, there it is. It has extracted all of that data right there and created all of those mapped manufacturing process steps to create that part. You can go in and, and modify these things if you like. You can change anything you want just as you would normally do inside SEER. Tune that up, print it out, look at all the detailed analyses that, that come into those things. All of these things are the way you would expect, the way you've come to trust in SEER are getting generated just in a matter of seconds. So I think these are pretty remarkable tools. They make estimating much faster, much easier, much more efficient, much more accurate in many cases. Uh, it's, taking, uh, it's taking surface areas down to the fourth or fifth decimal place. It's something that is very difficult to pull out, not very difficult, but, but um, challenging sometimes to pull out, move over into this here, modeler and make those entries. Uh, the expert databases are already there. The environments that Dr. Rush has uh, alluded to, we've changed those up just a little bit. You can very easily edit these things inside a, uh, an Excel file. You can give it uh, boundaries on your rules, what, how you want things treated, uh, the maximum hole that you're going to drill, two inches. You could take that down to an inch. You could take that to a quarter inch. Um, a lot of the things that are the expert information 
that that this interface is using is very accessible to your subject matter experts and your estimators and the people that you trust to represent your organization on, on doing these processes. Uh, materials are there, how you treat them, different processes. All of these things are already put in. They're in a much easier way to use than, uh, than perhaps you're accustomed to. And again, the estimates are deadly accurate. But we also asked ourselves, um, what happens if estimators, what if it's not a designer who's working day to day inside the CATIA environment and, and understands this tool really well? Or maybe you just don't want to give the estimators the opportunity to make changes inside the design. So uh, the team here has created what we call 3D, which is um, a tool that's really based on step files. Um, if the CATIA designer wants to export this design into a step file and pass it off to an estimator or someone else in the organization, we've got this tool that allows people to quickly, almost just as quickly, get the same kind of quality estimates that uh, the designer will have on his desktop. Um, you'll, you start by importing the part. That's the same part I was looking at in CATIA. Um, it's, it's got a, a little uh, display here, a modeler. It's got the ability to come in if you would like. And, and do measurements inside this modeler. Um, you can visualize the part you're estimating. Uh, it's got a number of general settings where, again, it's asking you what kind of environment are you going to be working in, what kind of processing are you going to be doing, how many parts are you going to be building, just as we had in the CATIA, uh, whether raw stock, aluminum alloys, if it's rectangular. Again, show the, show the part nested inside your, your stock. Um, it, asks you some of these questions just as it did inside the CATIA tool. It talks about the roughing operations that you're going to be using. It talks about the surface finishing operations you're going to be using. And again, you can, you can go in if you wish and turn these operations on or off. Um, you may decide you're not going to get those radii off the tool. You may want to go in with a separate process and turn those on. You may want to, instead of circular mill sur surface, you may want to go in and grab one of these and just turn that foot face off entirely or drag it into another process. Um, it's, it's, it's a very, very flexible, very good tool. Holes and countersinks, in this case I showed you the environment, all these holes are bigger than two inches. But, but very, very quickly um, you just tell the uh, tool to export your estimate. And in this case, SEER is going through, it's extracting again all of the geometry you have, all of those features that we looked at just a moment ago, and it is creating a SEER model just that fast where it has extracted all that geometry, all that data, and used the expert files, the environment files, the K bases even that you've got worked out and created an estimate just that fast. Um, it's, it's pretty remarkable. It, 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 it's going to make people's lives much, much better when it comes to doing estimates. Again, I just created three estimates in a, in a span of about 20 minutes. So if, if you're doing these kind of estimates, um, these add-ons are very value rich. They, they will make your life much easier. They will um, save your company lots of money. It will save your important, highly paid technical resources. Um, the work of, of generating estimates and let them get on to the to the more important work at hand. So, I think I think at that. Uh, I, other than to to summarize what it is that these tools might be able to do for you, um, I guess we should probably go into a summary at this point and talk about what it is the uh, uh, the tool is going to do for you. You get really accurate estimates almost instantly. Um, you're getting real-time cost feedback for the designer during his effort. You're really increasing the efficiency of the people who are doing estimates for you. Um, you're reducing the demand on the subject matter experts, whether they're, whether they're your operations, your highly paid operations folks working on estimates or, or your designers or, or your program managers, even the communication tools just makes it much easier to communicate 
what your assumptions were, what the results were, where your costs lie, and it's on a it's it's in standard work for people, so they do understand it and and realize that you can focus those assets on more critical issues inside your organization. Um, if you don't have a, an effective workflow for doing estimates, this will actually create help you create an effective workflow. And and importantly, if if you put it in the hands of the designer, where the designer is. Um, um, creating something, he he's got that opportunity for seventy or eighty percent savings uh, in, the, in the decisions he makes every day. So, I think I've probably um, talked too much. I'd kind of like to know what some of you folks who have taken the time to visit might want to ask about these tools. Okay, thank you, Dan. If you have any questions, please type them into the questions panel, and we will start to answer those for you as time permits. Um, let's see. Okay, I have a first question for you already. Can the tool be customized to reflect my organization's manufacturing processes? Oh, uh, yeah, I can answer that one. This is uh, Chris Rush. Um, I think Dan started to show the manufacturing environment uh, editor, and that's typically the way you would do that. In there, you would embed all the uh, all the process rules for for the the part that you're working with, or the types of part. And also inside of the SEER tool itself, there are knowledge base templates where you define your uh, labor rates, your efficiencies, all the settings that you you're typically accustomed to using SEER. Um, without the interfaces. So you kind of mirror those those uh, settings to make sure the interface will yield the, the results you're typically used to seeing from doing the manual steps. So yes, very, very much so you can customize. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, will the CATIA tool work with DMU viewer? The DMU, uh, currently it doesn't. Um, the interfaces are directly embed into the uh, Katir application itself, so it really needs to be on the, the full-up version of Katir. Um, does SEER estimate other manufacturing processes other than those demonstrated today? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you take that? that. Go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, Sear, Sear has got a, a robust, got a huge file of, of all the processes that, uh, um, that that Sear will cover. It'll cover anything from sheet metal to composites to wiring bundle, wiring harnesses, um, finishing, heat treating. Just uh, it, it's got the full gambit of everything that most manufacturers will need to have. It's inside the SEER tool. Um, we'll continue to add these these CAD to cost features going forward based on which ones are most in demand, really. So yeah, it's got a lot of things in it. Yeah, I, yeah it's the, you've got um, harnesses, there's PC boards, uh, you can model assemblies. I, I mentioned you, know, you can do a follow-up assembly fit up, fasten, drill, uh, um, and we're always, you know, modifying and adding new processes. We, we've got additive manufacturing in the coming up soon, um, and and then, like Dan mentioned, all of these processes we're we're going to slowly migrate them into uh, our other interface, uh, our CAD interfaces. Is the CATIA plugin included with SEER MFG, or does it require a separate license? It's a separate license. It's an addition to the um, to the SEER tool. And uh, as I as I hope I pointed out, maybe somebody caught. Uh, if you're doing these kind of estimates, and uh, you've got a, a designer, or you've got uh, an estimator, somebody that you're paying well, uh, it doesn't take many estimates. I don't believe to uh, to pay for the additional cost to add that. Add that module in. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, 
These interfaces look great. What versions on Katia do you support? Uh, currently, it works in uh, Katia v5 from release 20 uh, through to um, release 27, which is uh, this year's release. And that's in the 32 and 64 bit. Uh, actually, they dropped support for 32 bit in the 16 and 17, 2016 and 2017 release. But we support basically all the way up the uh, V5 offerings from Deso. Okay. Can SEER output spread or a range of pricing versus just one number? Yes. Um, one of the features of SEER is that we generate what we call a risk curve. Um, we give you opportunities to define the uncertainty as you go into the SEER tool, define the uncertainty or your confidence in, in the numbers that you're inputting. As a result of that, it does a Monte Carlo analysis and it will give you uh, a, a price distribution of parts to, uh, and show you what your risks are. Uh, your confidence of 10% versus your confidence at 90%. And you can set those confidence levels in the SEER tool as, as you're working in. Typically, we set them at 50% to give you the central number, but you can always look at the range of pricing that comes out. Okay, thank you. How does SEER 3D handle composite estimating from step files that do not contain the ply detail of a CATIA file? It will not automatically generate your ply tables. SEER, um, the, the composites plug-in, the, the, the ply cost estimator, it needs to have the material properties, the orientation, and the ply boundaries on a, on a ply by ply basis to be able to generate the ply book, the, the table. So it, it, yeah, it won't ge generate the ply table, um, as Dan mentioned, because it's essentially not part of the step file. But the um, what it will do, or what you can do, is take the overall dimensions of the part and you can use um, the alternative uh, modeling option in SEER for detailed composites modeling where you generally put the, the overall size, shape, thickness of the part you're working with. So all that data can be measured and extracted from, uh, from the SEER 3D viewer and then you have to kind of uh, guide that over into SEER for manufacturing. So there are yeah. kind of ways to do it, yeah. Yeah, enter it in the conventional way. Yeah, yeah. But you can use the tool to kind of see the part, get the overall dimensions, the thickness and length and width, and then... Make the then, measurements. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. But not, you, won't, you don't get that detail ply-by-ply ply, uh, capability that you do in uh, Katia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how does the tool handle materials not in its knowledge base, for example, proprietary OEM specifications? Well, not done. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, SEER has a, a series of, of files that are loaded when you put when you start SEER, and we call them our INI files. And one of the INI files that we load is called a material INI file and we encourage folks to go ahead and customize that file. It's simple to do. We've got tools to help you do it. You can do it by yourself. Um, we, we encourage you to get current pricing, um, the densities and the materials and what you call them so that everybody who is doing estimates using that material knows what it is, where to go get it, and that the data that is incorporated into SEER is accurate for it. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to do. Yeah. And often, a little, uh, just to follow on, uh, what I've noticed um, users doing, uh, they're, especially if they're in larger teams and there's a group of users, they'll centralize where these files are so that everyone is pointing to that central set of data and using that same uh, set of information. So and, and I've, you, yeah. I've, actually, I've actually seen where the supply chain, the people, the, the, the people in purchasing are, are keeping current pricing on those materials. Okay, yeah. So that you're using the most current pricing available. Mm -hmm. okay. Can SEER estimate cost for assembly for different rivet types and the automation of the riveting process? Yes. 
<laughs> I, we can embellish on that if you'd like, but uh, inside assembly there are a lot of options for different rivet types. The, um, um, the, the hardware itself, the fasteners themselves, are part of what I described earlier in your I and I file, your catalog files, where you can put your specific rivet in there. And, um, and we've got a lot of different options for installing rivets, blind rivets, uh, bucked rivets, um, finishing of rivets when you're done putting them in, and, and the degrees, the levels of automation you have for doing those things. So yes, it, it handles those things very well. You get wet install, dry install, yeah, <laughs> there's lots of options. I think we've covered, for those kind of processes, I think we have seen almost all of the most common, the most common certainly in many of the, um, the more rare processes and, and put modeling tools in there. And if you don't have a good modeling tool for that, SEER also provides for um, your own custom um, details. You, you can put in other, other things in there that are proprietary to you and then just pull them up and use them. Um, here's a question for you. We use Siemens NX and Unigraphics rather than CATIA. What are our options in this case? Is that the purpose of SEER 3D? That's the purpose of SEER 3D. Yeah. Can SEER do estimates using additive manufacturing 3D printing? <laughs> yeah. I, I, Chris, I, I think that we have, at this point in time, I think we have good models that, that know what the critical parameters are inside those. We do not yet have a robust set of data that we can point back to that says this is industry standard. And I really think that's about where we stand with additive manufacturing. Um, Chris, maybe you can give me a little more insight than that. Yeah, we're... Actually, we're currently um, working on the requirements and the development process has started. Um, so we're, our next uh, release of uh, SEER will include a new additive manufacturing work element. Um, and actually, in, we have a pending release of uh, MFG right now, which has some knowledge bases and user-defined parameters of a couple of the additive manufacturing models, so you'll be able to explore those in the, the uh, pending release, and the, the next version will have a, a full-up work element. So yeah, it's in, it's in the offering, but uh, so yeah, <laughs> I think I answered. Right, we have a, time for a couple more questions, so um, let me grab a couple more. Um, here's one. If designers are not using CATIA to design their parts, is it possible to import the CAD file into CATIA and use SEER from there? Will the estimate be as accurate, or does the part have to be designed in CATIA? No, it doesn't. Uh, the composite parts do, because the data for the ply books is embedded into SEER, but I believe that you can pull a step file in um, mm -hmm. for a machined part. Yeah, the sheet, the sheet metal part I think has to be built on the sheet metal desktop as well. Um, that's 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 valid. Yeah, yeah. Both of the uh, the ply cost estimator um, and the sheet metal cost estimator, they work off the specific um, CATIA application uh, process applications for modeling those uh, processes. The machining uh, interface is more general and it can work directly off step files, um, pretty much the same as CA3D. Okay, um, here's the last question for you gentlemen. How much can I expect to save using the SEER tools? <laughs> um, the, the, I, Chris, I'm going to take this because I'm, I'm, I'm out yeah. in people's, people's plants most of the time. So mm -hmm. it, it, the going in position is that, that you can save 10% very, very easily. We've got, we've got clients that are saving um, many times more than that. It, it depends on how you apply it and what your volumes are and things like that. But, um, you know, 10 to 30% is, is kind of the window that I've, I've seen 
recently uh, using the SEER tools. It actually turns into a profit center depending on how you want to set it up. Your estimating group can actually start making your company money, uh, which which I think is kind of a kind of a change in in paradigm for a lot of people. So um, you know, 10, 10 20 percent is is pretty easy on these things. I think I think we've actually seen case studies of people that are claiming 50% or more, and, that, and that's not us claiming that, that's them. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you get a great opportunity to save a lot of money. Great, thank you, Dan. Okay, thank you, uh, Dan and Dr. Chris Rush, for the presentation today, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we will be sending out the link to the recording and the slides from today's presentation. And if you have further questions, you can contact us. The contact information is up there at info.gallabath.com, or you can call us um, at our headquarters or at our UK offices. And um, thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.